Bundes comrades of mine in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, who started a uh, Reconstructionist uh, synagogue of their own. Uh, but they but they weren't officially recognized, so they called it Reconstructionalist. Uh, they put two other letters in there. And then uh, in 2019, they were putting on a gay marriage. And this upset the local fascists, and they came and massacred 27 people who were there, oh, including five of my comrades. And I put the, the writings together and published it as a book. So, I, you know, I have that connection to the... Yeah. Uh, well, see, the, the Reconstructionist movement is a ve we're very, like, social justice-y. Like, we, we believe in Israel, but we also believe that in the Palestinians have equal rights. And we, for example, on my Reconstructionist Israel trip that I'm going on next year, like I told you, we're, we're not just... We're, like, actually spending time with Palestinians uh -huh. going in the West Bank and, like, having, and having talks and listening to lectures from Palestinians mm. about, like, how they live. Um, and it's, it, it's, we really just need to come together. And when you're doing, when you're doing this, this isn't promoting coming together. You're not saying, like, go Netanyahu, like, uh, get him out. You're, you're just delegitimizing Israel. And then those people honking in the pro-Palestine cars I'm are going to think... There's nothing about Israel here. I'm just delegitimizing the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. But... The, you might you might have a different you do have a different view than the majority of people who are going to see this and think of it as something else. Maybe maybe not. No. Yes. So things I know have that changed now. They, they are. I. They, all the pro Palestine. Not no. I'm pro Palestine. I'm also pro Israel. Mm. But I'm. No, it's a genocide. I'm a genocide. No. Be ashamed. I should not be. I'm, I'm saving the, the honor of the no, Jewish you're people. you're not doing anything. And the International Court of Justice agrees with me. Doesn't it? The International Court of Justice agrees with me. No genocide is allowed. Well, what... There... What do you think... I don't think you fully responded to what I said. Uh -huh. Like, do you agree with me or not? Israel's goal is to kill, get Hamas, but, uh, but they're like a bulldozer. They don't care who gets in their way. That can those are that can be perceived as genocidal, like kind of like what they're doing can be perceived as genocidal and killing a lot of people. But their goal isn't to kill the Palestinian people. If Hamas, like if, that's, let's that's say only, Hamas, those are only words. Let's say Hamas. You have to look at the reality. About, let's say of Hamas what's... actually cared about their people and they started a war. From let's let's say there's a part of Gaza and some alternate universe that was just like a big field, not nearly as densely populated or something. They just had military bases there. Do you, do you think Israel would just bomb that, or do you think they'd be like, oh, this is an opportunity. Let's go get some. Let's go get some Palestinians while we're at it. We don't have to consider anything hy hypothetical because we can see what's going on right now. And no, they're they're but, not they're not. Uh, you know, uh, bombing Hamas. But They're no, bombing so the Palestinian people. Hamas is exploiting Israel's responsibility to defend itself by embedding themselves in all the civilian population, which I, I really don't know what the Israeli government should do in this situation, because they have to defend their people, but also if they're killing a lot of other people. Yeah, but you're ignoring the fact that they already had a ceasefire negotiated with Hamas. Uh, not a ceasefire, but a truce. That means and then, and then Hamas that Hamas is that rational by enough by to stop the fighting. They're not. Remember, but like, they did already. Israel proposed there, a full there was a truce for seven what days. When Israel proposed this full ceasefire for Hamas to surrender and release all the hostages. Oh, man. No way. That's no way. You know, no way. Why? The Palestinian prisoners have to be released as well. They're, they're, yeah, so you said prisoners, not hostages. Because they're prisoners. Yeah, they're prisoners. They're in a yeah, prison. I yeah, think, look, I. But they're being held hostage, you know? And, and there's 4,800, you know, yeah, since look, October the 7th. I, the majority of them have committed bad crimes, but when there's like a 15 year old who threw some rocks, I don't think he should go to jail, all right? Like, but... Not even that, you know, just for writing a comment on Facebook. My friend, my student, you know, was arrested and spent three years in prison. I went to the tribunal. In Israel? Yeah, I went to the tribunal at Ofra Prison, you know, to, to show that he had support for me. Wait, hold on, was it like a... And the judge didn't even lift his head to look say? at the prisoner. Was he just... Was and he like the judge, you know, terrorists? is a military officer. It's not a real judicial process. They don't have any law. Palestinians don't live in a state of law. It's under military... What is it called? Uh, military law. And they never get to see a judge. Yeah, I, I think they should.
and, and, and administrative detention, the old British, you know, law from colonialism, is still used, and there's like 600 Palestinians under administrative detention with no charge, just because they're and suspicious. Yeah, I think that's unfair, and I agree with you on that. So but they should have been released. A, but you have to acknowledge the difference between a nine-month-old baby who gets kidnapped and in like a 17-year-old throwing Molotov cocktails and like sta committing stabbing attacks on Israeli soldiers. There's a very oh, yeah, there's big a, difference there. Of the, of the 10,000 Palestinian prisoners who are held hostage, about 563 are violent the criminals. Yeah. What do the other ones do? Uh, nothing. That's not true. Every one of them did something. I, I mean, some, they, they some didn't commit any... No, no violent action. No, pretty much all of them were vi violent. No, no, 563 were violent. Where'd you get those numbers? Uh, well... Yeah, there. Look, they got arrested... Compiled for from the Israel military. The 4,800, you know, got, like I hear from this military I don't, I don't as well. Think all of them got, deserve to get arrested. And since October the 7th, in the West Bank, there's been like 300 Palestinians killed. Yeah, I think, as I well. think that's horrible. But, but like, so, you know, like, it goes on and on, you know, like, it, it has to stop. And the occupation, that's, that's just, like, what this has to be. The West Bank has to be freed. Oh, yeah, but when we're talking... In today's situation, it would have been different if you said this, did this before October 7th, but in today's situation... This uh, is from 2006, think, this banner. Yeah, okay. I've but been in, doing this a long time. It up now, but, so basically, when, if you're putting it up now, people, when people think end the occupation, they're going to be thinking of Gaza. Yeah, it's um, true. No genocide in Gaza. Uh, damn, my mind went like... Um... Uh... Oh yeah, and so any occupation would just. I'm ah. keep going like. What's left? Okay, yeah, Hamas isn't fighting to end the occupation because they know they have no chance of doing that. It means a, it means a violent force. So when you say that today, uh, you you don't like you're not. You're not really doing anything by saying end the occupation. You should be saying yes, because Israel will be forced to uh, leave the Gaza and stop the genocide. They were never in Gaza. No to gen genocide. They pulled out in 2005, and then they started regularly. Yeah, but regularly now they're going to be forced to leave. It's in Israel. It's but a Israel doesn't want to leave. Friends have to live with. You, you know why Israel doesn't want to leave Gaza? They they were never in Gaza until they started the war. Not okay. one Jew is in but Gaza. But since 2005, they've discovered gas offshore, under the Mediterranean. And that's why Israel wants Gaza back. No, that's not, they, they're plenty fine with that. And they also Gaza. want to build a canal, the Ben Gurion the Middle Eastern country canal to, to the Red Sea, to be a competitive, you know, with a Suez Canal. Both right. Why can't it be both? What? Like, what? Uh, let's say in Gaza, Hamas was super friendly with Israel. Israel probably wouldn't invade into the gas. It wouldn't be worth it. They'd work out a deal. Throughout history, economic deals are always better than war. Nobody's that dumb. But yeah, but Hamas is willing to recognize Israel no, if Israel not. recognizes Palestine. I don't know where you got that from. They're genocidal freaks who want to kill every Jew on earth. Uh, no, they that's... They, I get that from the op-eds that they published in the, in the when American done papers. When they Israel, we will go for all the Jews in the West. They are calling on every people across the world to go, like, uh, to go lynch Jews. Like, they're... No! Yes. Where? Show me. I well, actually, you're, you're both right. Again, so, Hamas used to say, kill all the Jews. Not Israelis, Jews. That was in their charter. They amended their charter. That's in right. 2006. They said, well, we're going to kill all of the uh, IDF and we're going to enslave the Jews because if we kick no, all the Jews out, we don't that. have any infrastructure. It's 2017 that they have a new charter and they call for uh, opposing Zionism and the occupation of Palestine. And they're willing to recognize and negotiate with Israel as a state in mutual recognition. But this is published in the New York Times and the Washington they're Post. They're Zionism, but they're willing to recognize Israel as a state. That is a Zionist. I don't. People, people warred the Zionism. Yeah, they're like willing to compromise. That's right. Well, you have to remember that uh, the founder of Hamas, I think it was around 1990 something, early 2000. 88. Um, yeah. He was like, let's have a ceasefire, not because I want peace, but because I'm getting old, and I don't think we're going to solve this in our lifetime. So let's just have a peace. But I think the Israelis have a good point when they say, well, a ceasefire just means give Hamas more time to rearm themselves. It's not really a ceasefire of either side believing they're going to work out a deal in the future. Well, like, they, they could, but not with this government. This 
government. It's not possible.